Can I advise members that apologies for absence have been received from councillors Cheryl Didsbury, Andrew Foxley, Merla Juarez, um, Gary Miller, Emily Spurrell, Sue Walker, Colin McCallie, and Rosie Jolly. Are there any further apologies to report? Before we move any further, can I just express my congratulations to Leon Tootle? Leon Tootle's birthday is today, so can we all wish him a happy birthday? Okay, 
Mayor Anderson, I believe you wish to make a statement. Uh, thank you, Lord, Lord Mayor. Um, Lord Mayor, I just want to think it was important that I updated the Council on the position uh, with regards to uh, our Chief Executive, Jed Fitzgerald, uh, following events over the last couple of days. Um, as you know, um, Jed Fitzgerald was arrested on uh, Monday at the 22nd of May uh, and he was released on bail without charge. I uh, asked to speak to the leaders of the parties on the council uh, this morning and I spoke to two uh, of the leaders and updated them. I also uh, had a meeting of the appointments uh, panel, the appointments of disciplinary panel uh, this morning to give them uh, an update but also to inform them of uh, the current uh, state of play. Um, it's important, I think, for everybody uh, in this chamber um, to understand uh, that it's a, for us as a city council and also under our own constitution uh, in relation to the officer member protocol, it's important uh, for us not to speculate about uh, what uh, it means because, quite simply, I've always uh, believe um, that our justice system is based on a simple principle that we're all innocent until uh, proven guilty and I think we should remember that this remains uh, the case. I spoke to uh, the Chief Executive and also to the police on um, Monday and Tuesday and I um, was informed by the police about the nature of their investigation. I've also took the opportunity over the last couple of days to reflect on how this impacts on the city. And I think I can say to you that the Chief Executive himself has done the same. And we've both concluded, uh, and he has more importantly concluded, that uh, he will voluntarily step aside from his role uh, for a period once certain investigations are complete. This will also extend uh, to the additional duties that the Chief Executive has been undertaken as interim head of paid service for uh, the Liverpool City Region Combined Authority. I personally and on behalf of the Council have accepted the decision. I think it's the right decision for the City and to enable our Council to actually carry on and deliver the services uh, without distraction. I think it's also important to say that the Chief Executive has not been suspended by the Council and is not subject to any disciplinary process by the Council. There is therefore no intention to appoint an interim Chief Executive and the requirements of the role will be covered by myself as the Executive Mayor, supported by the senior management team in this period including nominating somebody to carry out the responsibilities of head of paid service. It's also important to recognise uh, in all of this that the Chief Executive uh, took the decision on the basis of the best interests of the City of Liverpool. And I personally uh, thank him for that because it was always going to be difficult given the press coverage and also the interest from outside of the city for him to carry on uh, regardless. But I want to also uh, reassure members that we'll take the sensible decisions that we have to take at the right time with strong, robust legal advice regarding the employment status of all of our personnel. And what I won't allow is for knee-jerk reactions which place our duty of care as an employer in jeopardy. I also want to make it clear that Liverpool as a city is open for business. It is, from my point of view, business as usual. We have a, a position with an executive mayor. I will carry out those functions. But we also have what I believe to be a fantastic team of senior management officers in this council which will help us deliver the services that the people of this city expect. 
So to those who want to uh, whip up uh, and smear the things that are happening within this city, it won't make any difference. We are a city that is open for business and we are a city that is following and abiding by the principles that everybody in this chamber should hold dear. Lord Mayor, I'm happy to accept any questions on this matter. So, the, the Mayor is willing to accept questions, and can I just make the point that he is willing to accept questions? Can we not, uh, ref can we please refrain anybody from just making long speeches or anything like that? Questions only. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Councillor Kelly. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. I just want to let you know that it's my intention to be head of your star chart this year and never to get 500 lines and I'm going to start uh, with these comments today. Uh, the elected mayor is quite right to remind us that everyone in this country, unlike others, is innocent until proved guilty. That will either be found at some stage by charges being brought or not brought, and will go to court or may go to court when they could be found guilty or not guilty. But until that happens, everyone in this country is not guilty. The migrant. Oh, sorry, Councillor, again, just in yeah. reference to what I said before, can we get to the question? Yes, I, I was just turning to those two questions which uh, I've got my little merch, highlight two minor differences. Uh, which I have with the statement made by the elected mayor, not on the fact that the Lord, the uh, chief executive is recused from uh, this position, because I think he is absolutely right that, for example, had he been here today, that would have dominated the press coverage rather than the, the elections in New York. So my question is twofold. We seem to have invented a new definition of suspended without prejudice. So I don't expect the mayor to answer this question today, but I would be interested to know, as I think other councillors would, uh, on the number of people who have been suspended without prejudice on PO and SO grades over the last 10 years. But the second question I've got is the financial position uh, incurred by this council in proceeding with the course as it does. Uh, I too have taken legal advice on this matter, and it would appear that should the uh, voluntary uh, separation of uh, Mr Fitzgerald from the council continue for anything more than a fairly minimal period, then by paying him, uh, those payments will be ultra vires. Uh, and I would ask uh, the mayor or, or the city solicitor to make further investigations about the length of time this situation could continue, bearing in mind that we have no guarantees of the length of time that the legal process will take. Councillor yes, Kerr. Okay. Sorry, Mayor Anderson. Uh, Lord Mayor, <coughs> uh, let me deal with, with um, because Councillor Kerr often has difficulty understanding uh, what he doesn't want to hear, and then he also has selective amnesia. Let me tell them that we did not say that the Chief Executive would be suspended. He said he voluntarily removed himself. There's a big difference. And then we talked about is he going to get paid? We also, in the previous comments, mentioned that we took the decision without prejudice. To not pay him, I would suggest, is prejudice. And I would also suggest that given the fact that he's done nothing wrong in this council, there are no issues, disciplinary issues, for him to face in this council. It would seriously prejudice this council and put this council at risk if we did such and take such an action as you are suggesting. Let me take address then the issue of your selective amnesia. The fact of the matter is, he's been arrested, not charged. And I don't recall you when Warren Bradley was arrested, charged and convicted, jumping up and down saying there was anything wrong. And I don't recall you doing it when Mr. Hayes 
was arrested, charged and convicted and carried on in the roles as councillors. I don't recall you jumping up and down. And let me just remind you about the difference between your administration when you run it and my administration when I run it. We will always do the right thing and we will not take risks with taxpayers' money and the public. Because let me just remind you again because of your selective amnesia. Let me just remind you because people need to remember this because we do have a duty of care to all employees of this council. And I would remind this council of what happened when the bullying and intimidation of Jason Hardwell by the then leaders and members of this council led us to actually pay out £230,000. I will also remind people of what happened with the former chief executive of the council, David Henshaw, and the fact that that cost us £340,000, over half a million pounds worth of taxpayers' money because of your administration running and dealing with matters, internal matters, that were couched and acted and said and stated and found guilty of bullying and intimidation of people within the council. That was the charges. They were the allegations made and they were found to be correct. That's why the current former sorry, leader of the Lib Dems had to stand down, if you remember. So we'll take no lessons off you about how we conduct ourselves. Let me just make it absolutely clear that right throughout this process I've engaged and worked with not only our internal legal officers but external legal officers. I told you that this morning. I explained that to you this morning. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, and I'm sure Councillor Radford will agree as a HR head, that it is absolutely important that this City Council treats people with the respect and the dignity that they deserve. And as far as I'm concerned, I will stand by that tenant principle, basic principle, of our, or, or everyone in this chamber and everyone who lives in this city, the human rights in terms of innocence until proven guilty. And I'll remind you, remind you, to bear in mind, the Chief Executive of this Council has not been charged with anything. And in relation to his role as Chief Executive of this Council, he has done nothing wrong. You just need to bear that in mind. And also bear in mind the officer member protocol when you make some of the comments that you make. Councillor Trump. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I have a few questions for you, Mayor. The Chief Executive will be receiving his full £200,000 salary while he's off for this indefinite period. I'm sure, sure you'll agree that it's uh, very painful for any public body to be paying out money in return for no services in return. Can you confirm whether there will be any additional remuneration to any other members of staff who are helping to cover for the Lord Mayor while he's off? So that's the first one. Will there be additional costs? I'm sorry for the Chief Executive. Uh, the second thing is the indemnity, which indemnity will be, will be applied. The events that have been um, looked at by the police involve Lancashire Council and therefore it would seem rational that it goes to Lancashire, not Liverpool City Council. And can you confirm that any official roles that need to be undertaken, such as returning officer, especially at this time, which is obviously an election period, will not be carried out by a political uh, member of the council? In relation to your, your question about the an indemnity, the indemnity of the council applies to, uh, in, under the constitution of the council, applies uh, in relation to Mr Fitzgerald as an employee of the council. It is in relation uh, to his activity here within the council that he's been looked at and spoken to in relation to Lancashire. Okay? So, so that's the, fir the first point. And it's under the Constitution. It's been sent to external uh, legal advice to make sure that we are following the Constitution, following uh, all of the things that we're supposed to do. So that, that's the first point. The second point you raised about whether he receives his salary. I refer you to the comment that I made uh, to uh, Councillor Kemp. He's done absolutely I was just referring to whether there will be any additional cost to the council if other people who are 
I thought you also asked the question because you said that it will come on to this authority about whether you get the paid or not. I thought you did. Okay, if you don't want me to answer that one, that's fine. No, what was I was saying, at this current time, there will be no additional expenditure. The chief executive will, if I need him to be available to me, to give me advice or to talk to me, or, or, or available for anything that I want him to be, he will. I just remind you, he's done nothing wrong in terms of his employment at this council. He's not getting disciplined by this council, and there are no charges in relation to this council. What I can also tell you, what I can also tell you, is when the chief executive's bail uh, was uh, discussed with the police, I discussed it with the police, and there is no uh, problems with him actually being at work in the Brooklyn City Council. None whatsoever. The police have got no concerns. We took the decision because of the media service and because of people's interest in just him and not what we're doing as a city. That's why he took the decision to stand aside while he cleared his name and why we get to the and get to the bottom of it. That's why he's made that decision. So but if I need, and let me be absolutely clear, if I need to bring in any additional advice or, or whatever we need to do to move this city forward at any time, that's what I'll do. Okay, but it has, I might not have any, and it won't have anything to do with the chief executive not being around because he will be available to me if I need him to be. But I'm confident in my competent team of senior officers to be able to carry on delivering the services that this city requires to do and more. I believe you wanted to ask a question. Um, it's a question and a suggestion. Can I thank the mayor for? inviting opposition leaders to, to meet with him. Unfortunately, I wasn't available, but I um, do appreciate that he took the opportunity. And can I say in the broader sense, I've, I think this is quite an unsavoury question time. I really don't think it, it is appropriate at such an early stage for members to be dragging out a debate about a personal circumstances. I, it, I feel this isn't the way I would conduct my work at the workplace as a personnel manager. It's not the way I conduct my business as a councillor. It's not the way I conduct my business as a chairman of a community charity. And it's not the way I think the city does itself. Don't worry, Councillor Radford, there isn't going to be a debate, as I said, we're just asking well, questions. I, I think you can understand the spirit of the question saying. Um, and I, the only thing I was going to say is. is um, Setting the precedent of leave of absence with pay does set precedence, and this could be discussed and should be discussed, I think, not in question time at the council, it should be discussed on the appointments of the screen panel, so that whatever we do is consistent uh, to the circumstances as well. And the only thing I would ask the Mayor to give consideration of is whether it would actually uh, add to the robustness of the committee to make maybe at some point a variation to include uh, some opposition members um, rather than just be uh, all of one party. Uh, that might add to the credibility of that hearing, but I think that's where these questions should take place. Lord Mayor, on the uh, first point, uh, my position is a very difficult one. Uh, very simply, my role is to act in the best interest of the city, as always. I welcome your comments about the uh, position uh, uh, being discussed here. Um, but we are an open and honest and transparent administration that will always conduct our business in, in an open and transparent way with nothing to hide. The fact of the matter is, is that unfortunately you didn't, uh, couldn't attend, couldn't attend the, the, the meeting. But I invited both Councillor Kemp and Councillor Crone to attend uh, the appointments and disciplinary panel this morning, which took place immediately. In fact, it was delayed while we had our meeting together. So again, I can reiterate that there is nothing to hide. It would have been very, very easy for me because it's not a formal process. This is a voluntary uh, uh, arrangement to actually, if you like, circumvent that and not either discuss it here tonight 
or to have discussed it at the appointments and disciplinary panel. It would have been very easy to do that. But I didn't, and I won't, and I never wanted to, because I believe that we should be open and honest with the situation that we're in. Now, how the media organisations deal with that through other people, uh, it, it provide them with information or questions, we'll provide the answers to those organisations and to councillors in a perfectly open, honest and transparent way. Not putting at risk this council, as has previously been done, and you're well aware of, with Mr Henshaw and Mr Harbrow, and, and indeed with other councillors that were found guilty of offences. So I'm sorry to mention that, but it really does seem hugely hypocritical for me for one member of this council to actually challenge us on what we're doing when he was part of an administration that allowed that to go on and happen. So as I finish, uh, Lord Mayor, I'll say this, that we will continue to act in the right way in the interest of the city. We'll take advice and we'll actually uh, make sure that everything that we do is not putting at risk our city moving forward. And our city remains open for business. There's no problems here. There's no issues here. Our city is open for business and that's what we've been doing today. Uh, do, doing things that you would expect us to do. Okay. I haven't seen anybody indicate any further questions, so I thank uh, Mayor Anderson for those questions, for those answers, and ask him to, to move on to announce the appointment of Deputy Mayor of Liverpool, Assistant Mayors, Cabinet Members and Responsibilities in their own. I just want to make some uh, comments because you've seen um, the uh, cabinet positions um, and you can uh, they're there for you and you also see the uh, mayoral, uh, mayoral leads. Uh, I just want to, um, because it's the uh, AGM, make some comments just around where the city is and, and indeed what we uh, look forward to over the forthcoming 12 months before I actually get to the challenges we face and why I've um, uh, created uh, the cabinet that I have uh, and also with, with the mayoral leads. Just an update in terms of where we are uh, around the Commonwealth Games. In three months time uh, the government will be making a, a decision. People in the chamber are fully aware of the team that we've put together uh, from Adonaya. Uh, and his team along with the other council officers have been working extremely hard behind the scenes. We've got a dedicated team with a board uh, led by Brian Barwick with Denise Barrett Baxendale. Uh, we've engaged at the football club who are working with us to actually uh, deliver a stadium uh, for us on Brandy Moore Dock. We've also engaged with Peel Holdens who are working with us as well uh, to, deliver, to deliver on that site the assets that we need in terms of students, uh, sorry, athletes accommodation uh, and all of those things. And we're also uh, looking excitedly ahead uh, to winning the competition and actually talking about how we will use our river uh, and the festival, the Commonwealth Games Festival, uh, to promote our city using our river uh, in, in the best way possible. And I think the site and what we have and the offer that we have is as good as anywhere now. Uh, absolutely determined uh, that we should uh, go full-blooded uh, to win this competition and if we do it will be a great uh, statement of this city's vision moving forward over the next decade but it will certainly put Liverpool in the spotlight in 2022 and, and beyond. I just want to also uh, talk about uh, the Liverpool promise and I'll mention uh, a, a little bit with the cabinet uh, appointments that I've made. It's a promise between our schools and the parents and pupils to improve exam results in, in, in the city. Uh, bringing together our partners, the Liverpool promise will uh, not only tackle e educational aspects of school performance but other factors as well as such as poor health, work readiness and developing aspiration and ambition. And that's why there is a real need that will just co solely concentrate on education and improve on education uh, standards. We'll also, and again I'll talk about this just very briefly in the, uh, with the mayoral leads, but we are, uh, as you know, in the 
the city, investing uh, 11 uh, million, people, million pounds a year in terms of homelessness and rough sleeping. And we uh, deal uh, with around 6,000 families to prevent them becoming ho uh, homeless in the first place. Our housing first approach, uh, the Roots Out of Rough Sleeping Group, uh, has been interviewing providers and users of our service and they'll publish shortly an interim report in June with new proposals and new improvements about how we develop that service uh, moving forward. Delivering uh, 11 million pounds each year and getting the same outcome and just supporting people to be, be dependent on our services and be dependent on, on actually substances as well is not an option and that's why uh, we've had and will introduce two new male leads to actually help us tackle homelessness and rough sleeping on the streets. In terms of our housing company, there's nothing more uh, in our manifesto commitments that excites me more about our housing offer and what we propose to do with regards to housing in this city. I believe it will be absolutely transformational. It will actually not only transform our housing offer in this city, I believe it will be a lead, an exemplar of how housing should be done across the whole country. And indeed, I know it excites uh, political parties across the spectrum. Indeed, the Liberal Democrats have actually followed our lead and introduced the, uh, the rent to buy scheme within their manifesto, copying major, for example, you could ask for a better endorsement than that. So that's, uh, well, sorry, um, yeah, I'd rather have a conservative endorsement than, than a Lib Dem one, at least you can trust that. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is we then will be not only providing uh, support for housing, it will be a completely new offer and I'm sure uh, Councillor Hunt uh, and the Mayor League uh, working together will be able to uh, look at that. And I think we are going to also explore the fact that we probably will need to introduce a new housing select committee to look at how we move forward with housing moving forward. But I'm sure Councillor Hunt will talk in detail about that at the next regeneration select committee about how we how deliver on that. On economic uh, development and investment, there are a number of exciting regeneration uh, projects and, and uh, opportunities that are being carried out uh, in the city at the moment, each one contributing to the transformation of our city and also creating jobs and creating a sustainable economy for the future. Paddington Place, uh, we all know uh, about as an exciting opportunity. Um, 38 acres uh, of prime land next to the hospital, one of our uh, Denmark school sites has been transformed and today I was speaking to the Royal College of Physicians uh, and others that are moving on, on, on to that site and a great uh, opportunity. We've also uh, got plans for Mount Pleasant and the car park and the land at the back of the Adelphi which is all in our ownership and exciting proposals uh, will be moving forward on that soon uh, with uh, a, a design uh, and also a plan and application that will probably go in very early uh, next year. So the festival gardens, we've got great opportunities and great interest in the festival gardens, not just for housing but for developing that site. Already, uh, as you'll have heard about the cruise line the terminal, we're actually on with uh, a design uh, being created and made for the cruise line and terminal with a plan of application uh, going in by uh, the end of, of, of this year. We've also secured land from Peel Holdens uh, with regards to developing that which will give the City Council an income uh, as well. And you've also heard about the £23 million road infrastructure that's connecting our waterfront to the rest of the City Centre through the Leeds Corridor. We've also got the exciting news of Everton Football Club and Bramley Moor and the dock linked to uh, the Commonwealth Games. A great opportunity for one of the most fantastic institutions in the world, not just in Liverpool and the whole country, but Everton is one of the most amazing football clubs in the whole world. And I look forward to uh, seeing that. We've got the 10 Streets Initiative, uh, which is going to be a fantastic addition as we've got the Baltic Triangle
growing so successfully that it needs to expand, that we've got 10 streets, but 10 streets is no longer 10 streets, it's about 20 streets as we actually widen the development of that area. And of course with uh, Liverpool Waters there's some exciting opportunities, uh, not only with us with the Commonwealth Games again, but also some of the developments that are now happening on the Liverpool Waters scheme, some of them going to planning and some of them in planning uh, as we speak. And then on roads, one of the things that I remind people of is that if people remember the big dig that was introduced by the Liberal Democrats in 2004, what they did was they skimmed the surface of the roads in the city, they didn't do the roads properly and as a result of that, so you know, 11, 12, 13 years on, those roads are disintegrating really fast and we've got to do something about it. So the bottom line is we are cracking on with not only uh, repairing the roads, but we'll probably have somewhere in the region of £180 million over the next six years being spent on improving our roads across the whole city. So we are uh, getting on with that despite uh, austerity and despite the government's uh, cuts. I want to then uh, turn to some of the challenges uh, that we face in the city and how we are coping with them. But I'm going to uh, just flip, just you know, give out some information uh, around my cabinet, why I've chosen those particular areas as cabinet members, and then also talk about uh, the male uh, leads anyway. Uh, I'm delighted to uh, keep um, Councillor Alan Bain as uh, Deputy Mayor of Liverpool, uh, somebody that just goes from strength to strength uh, in not only supporting me but leading for the council in, in many, uh, many areas and as far as I'm concerned is doing a, a fantastic job uh, within that particular area. She oversees uh, the political governance of the council, making sure that we're delivering on our manifesto commitments. She's got responsible uh, responsibility for planning and building control and the city council's property uh, and, and assets and, and special uh, project. Although uh, she's not going to claim credit, I'm sure she'll leave that to me for the wonderful purchase uh, that was made by our team, headed by Nick Cavallon of the QNAR. I have to say as well, just to let you know, that the QNAR is now full. It's bringing in a, a re revenue of around 1.6 million pounds. There's new jobs going on there, hundreds of new jobs. And it was something that the Liberal Democrats and I think the Greens have hold as well. But it's now worth in excess of 28 million pounds and it was a, a fantastic acquisition made by uh, the council. So, <laughs> the old municipal annex for uh, 11 million quid. And that, some of that money will be used, of course, to help us repair some of the roads. But and again, another fantastic deal. But uh, I'm not going to claim credit for, for that. Um, and then I move on to our assistant mayor, Councillor Wendy Simon, who is actually uh, head of Transform and Sports, the Recreation and Library facilities, our cultural strategy, and of course the visitor economy. And some of the things that we've got uh, planned not only for this year. Uh, with Sergeant Pepper for the things that we've got uh, planned for next year. And you know, I think we should pay tribute not only to Claire and McCollum and her team and Wendy and, uh, and all uh, the officers on that because you know, it is absolutely linked to the regeneration and growth and investment in our city. When you think about when I actually talk about culture being the rocket fuel for our city, it is because Without those cultural events and without people coming to see our city, there will be no investment, there would be nobody coming back and investing. And so that tourism sector and that particular sector is a huge driver. I think Wendy does a fantastic uh, job in that. Nick Small, uh, as I said, as assistant mayor, will also now just stick to uh, the responsibilities of education to make sure that we drive up educational standards. He's also going to be in charge of uh, the Liverpool Promise, our needs to make sure that we uh, remove as many young people from the needs uh, list as we possibly can. Also, our children's centres protected, our children's centres as we've done, despite the huge financial cuts that we've faced. 
and also then moving on. Can I say that uh, we've got Councillor Paul Brandt, who not only is uh, dealing with the, <coughs> the issues of adult social care within our city, but he's also dealing with the changing sort of face of adult social care and the need for us to adapt and change. Uh, if we don't adapt and change, we won't cope and we can't cope. So it's a difficult job under difficult circumstances, but I think we're in safe hands knowing that we'll actually look at transforming the service uh, moving forward. We've got still children's services with Barry Kushner again staying in that particular post, which is the responsibility of safeguarding children as the main role, <coughs> and that's something that we desperately need uh, to continue and also reduce the number of kids in foster care uh, and, and look after children within, within the system. I've decided to uh, give a community safety role back on a cabinet level for a number of reasons. Manchester <coughs> is clearly a uh, warning to us all that the existential threat of terrorism <coughs> exists. No matter what we do as a city, not just in Liverpool but elsewhere, we can never do enough. We can never ever do enough. Because there will be people who want to cause mayhem and bloodshed under some uh, mad uh, aim or, or desire to actually change the way we are uh, as a country. That will always be there. And we have to get smarter in the way we do things. Working with agencies with limited resources, the police, the fire services, our emergency services. And that role and responsibility of a cabinet member will be, work, will be working with the public services, but working with the private sector to make sure that we're joined up, to make sure that we do things like using our CCTV stock and how we support one another in protecting people as they go about their daily lives in this city. And that's why it's important that we send a clear message that Sound City takes place over the weekend, as well as the Liverpool Marathon. Because nothing, nothing will stop this city, Manchester, Birmingham or any other city in this country from operating. No atrocity, no act of terrorism would stop us from doing that. <laughs> I've just told you about our housing plans and I think they are absolutely some of the most exciting things that I think as a councillor of 20 years that we've been involved in. And I look forward to not only working with people who can't afford uh, to upgrade their housing, to provide them with an option to upgrade their housing, but allow them to actually have the equity in their house back into their bank accounts and we'll take on that property. We'll also be buying out properties in Tubu, in Anfield and places and modernising them and creating sustainable communities, taking away the rogue landlords who want to snap up cheap properties and actually put three and four lots of families within them, as well as buying new houses. We'll actually be building new houses and we'll actually be refurbishing new houses. That's why it's so exciting and I know Frank Hunt has got that same passion and excitement as me. As I said, with regards to the problems that we face with our roads and improvements and also about our transport network and how we improve that. The street cleansing, uh, our waste recycling, our waste management, our street scene, our parks and our green spaces are all going to come under the highways and city services umbrella headed up by Steve Mumby. It's a massive, massive opportunity not only for us to bring services back in-house and operate them differently, providing